you're not aware. If I knew what aware was, I could say that. Anybody know what aware is? That's a good question. What's aware? You can have Tupperware. You can, you, you can have a werewolf. So, so that's a wolf that's aware. But I have a really cool story to tell. And I need some volunteers for this story. Do I have any volunteers for this story? Anyone? Anyone? I got some volunteers right here. Okay, you kids, I want all the kids who are kids to come and stand over here by the puppet stage. This over here is the camp of Israel, okay? What was that? I think the, oh, there we go. Here, I'll take that. I'll take that. Thank you. All right, so this is the camp. Okay, kids, you need to be over here too. This is the camp of Israel, okay? And I'm setting the stage here, okay? So you got to pay attention. We're going to move really, really fast. I'm going to talk really fast, and then you can hear what we're doing, and then you know what's going on. Okay? Good. All right, camp of Israel. Okay, now every time I say Israel camp, you guys have to scream. Ready? Let's practice. Camp of Israel. All right, they got it down. Okay, now the story we're going to tell today about the camp of Israel, about the camp of Israel. The, there we go. Yes. So we have the camp of Israel. And we have another place called Jericho. Now when we say Jericho, we say dun dun dun. Ready? Now I need some people who, who make good walls. Now, I need you to recommend some volunteers. You make a good wall. Okay, come up here. I want you to stand right here. Okay. No, you're a wall. Do your best wall in prayer. Oh, well, that's a perfect wall. Okay. Okay, you need to face this way. Okay, I need another wall. You want but you? Okay, come up here. You stand right beside here. Okay, you are the north wall of Jericho. All right, I need some more people who are walls. You ready to be a wall? Okay, you come up here. You stand right here. You face this way. You are going to be the west wall. Dun, dun, dun. You ready? Okay, who else will be a wall? Oh, come on up here. Come on. You can be another west wall. You stand right here. You face that way. All right, now I need some more volunteers. Right here? All right, come on up. Okay. You two girls can be the east wall. So you can stand here and face this way. It's okay. Okay, ready? You're right here. All right, now we need some more. We got some volunteers? Come on. Come on, Joseph. There we go. And the best part of being picked second last is you get to pick the last person. Okay. You guys, now you guys got to stand right here in the middle, okay, so, because we need some room on this side here. Let's move this. All right, so we have the camp of Israel. Okay, you guys stand right here, so you're facing this way, so you're making a wall. And then we have the wall of Jericho. So, now we need the star of the play. We need somebody who is not afraid. Are you ready? You know what? We can pick from the tribe of Israel. We can do that. All right. Here we have our volunteer. This, we shall call him Joshua. And he doesn't have any parents. You guys don't get that because he was Joshua, the son of Nun. All right. Okay. You are Joshua. Okay. Walls don't move. They just stand there. Okay, come on, walls. Give me your best impersonation of a wall. All right. Now, we need some people who are in Jericho. You. You get to stand inside the walls. You too. Come here. Come here. Stand inside the walls. Okay, the wall. Yeah, the walls are just walls. Okay. So we have the people of Jericho. And the people of Jericho, what do they say? No, that, that Jericho goes dun, dun, dun. The people inside Jericho, 
they, they're not very nice people. They get to like give their, their best their best slapstick and insults. Okay, have, have, what's your best insult? Your mom. Oh. oh. She went there. Wow. We're going to have to censor this. All right. All right. So, the people in Jericho, they, you can, how about this? Every time we say the people of Jericho, you got to laugh. Ready? <laughs> uh, and you know what? Walls can laugh too. That's okay. The walls can. Okay, ready. So, we have the camp of Israel. We have the walls of Jericho. We have the people in Jericho. And we have Joshua, son of Nun. Okay. Israel, you got to be over there. You got to be, you guys got to be in your camp. Right over here. Right over here. Joshua, you can be right here. Right here. And you guys, you guys, Joshua, Joshua is your leader. Okay. So you follow Joshua where he goes. Okay. You got to follow. We can have more than one Joshua. You guys can both be Joshua. How, oh, you know what we need? We need a Caleb. Who will be Caleb? Do you want to be Caleb? You can be Caleb. Caleb and Joshua are best buds. Okay? Now, we need somebody to do a really cool part, and, and they need to be an angel. An angel. Oh, I see it. I see it. I hear it, too. Okay, we need a volunteer. Come on. Come on. The angel plays a very important role. Okay, Israel, you got to be over here. Israel, over here, over here. Camp of Israel. Camp of Israel. There you go. Okay, you boys, you stand right there. Okay, because you're going to be terrified in a second. All right. Angel. Angel, where's, where's our angel? Thank you for volunteering. Here you, you're volunteering. Okay, right here. You're an angel. Yeah, you know your lines, right? What's your line? I don't know. <laughs> okay, here we go. The angel is standing here, and you got to look tough. Okay, you, give me your tough face. Come on, come on. Your, your toughest face you got. No, not this one. Because you know what happened? When Joshua came up and saw the angel, what happened? He was terrified. So look scared. Look scared. All right. Look terrifying. Okay. We can work with this. All right. The angel says to, or Joshua sees the angel and comes up and says, are you with us or against us? Are you with us or against us? And you say. No. Or yes. I don't know. I don't know the storyline. You say. I am with the angel's army. I'm the head of the angel's army. You can make it up because we don't know exactly what happened. So you can just ad-lib. I am the angel's... It works. And now the angel tells Joshua his plan of how they are going to defeat Jericho. The people of Israel are going to battle against Jericho. So the angel tells, are you listening? You got to listen, because this is where he gives the instructions on how you're going to win. Because how do you think you would win a battle? I don't know, because you don't have the instructions from God. You don't got the instructions from God. The wall, these are some noise. The walls know what's going to happen. That's good. I like that. All right. Okay. So the angel tells Joshua, the Lord is for you. You are going to beat them, not by your own hands, not by your own effort, but by listening to this command. You're going to march around the wall one time for six days. Okay, walls, walls. We need a real wall here. Come on, walls. Get, get, get squared up because you're a big wall. Okay. So now you just repeated everything I said. You are going to defeat the walls of, I don't know how to say that name. Jericho. Jericho, 
by walking around it once for six days. And then on the seventh day, you stop. You march around seven times. And you march around seven times. All right. And you <laughs> blow your trumpet. All right, Tyler, where are you? I need you to get your trumpet ready. Okay. <laughs> so this is what happened. He goes back. Joshua, Caleb can join him. And you tell the camp of Israel. And you tell the camp of Israel. You tell them what? We are going to defeat the Jerokeans. The Jerokeans. I just made that up. <laughs> we're we're going to win. Wait. We're going to win against Jericho. Cool. And how are we going to do it? With God's plan. We are going to We we are going to march around the the wall of Jericho seven what one time for six for six days, and on the seventh day we will walk, we will march around the wall of Jericho seven times and blow our trumpets the last time. And then what's going to happen? And then the walls of Jericho will fall down. Okay, walls. You heard that. You got your cue. All right, all right. So we are okay. Day one, we're all sleeping. Okay, there, there. Okay, how do you sleep? Everybody, lay down on the floor. You're sleeping. They're sleeping in the camp of Jericho. They're sleeping in the camp of Jericho. Are the walls all squared up? Angel, you can go down. You get no part in the story. You're actually the one who does all the work, but we don't see it, so you're okay. Good job. All right, do we got room? Okay, these are our walls. Now, as they march, you guys can cheer at them. You can, like, boo, whatever. But you can't touch them. You can't touch them, okay? All right, and the sun comes up in the camp of Israel. And it's day one. And Joshua and Caleb lead the Israelites to march around Jericho one time and then back to their camp. Okay, so go follow And then they go back to camp and go back to sleep. I think we lost some. All right. Day two. The sun comes up in the camp of the Israelites. Yay. And they march around. And they're going. That's the. And they go back to sleep. The end of day two. Now, something special happened on day three. The sun came up. All right. The sun came up. And it's day three in the camp of Israel. And they march around Jericho. And then they go back to sleep. That was day three. Now, how many of you think this is a, an effective battle strategy? We got two people who think it's a good strategy. You know what makes it a good strategy? Because God said so. That's what makes it good. Okay. What day are we on, kids? Day four. Day four, day five. It's day six. Let's do day six. Okay, day five. Day five. And they keep marching. We're marching. We're marching. We're marching. And then they go back to the camp and they go back to sleep. Those walls look pretty sturdy right now. All right. Day six. The sun comes up. And they march around Jericho one more time. All right, and then they go back to sleep. Now, while they were sleeping, the walls in Jericho, dun, 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 
They, they were like perfectly in alignment. Now, these walls aren't your standard walls. These walls were like 40, 50, 60 feet tall. So you guys got to reach up as high as you can reach. Okay, reach up really, really tall. Come on, effort. Come on, how high? Okay, and they were strong walls. Nobody had ever broken through these walls before. Nobody had ever entered in because they were protected. And nothing had ever happened to them because of their strong walls. Okay, walls, look strong. Come on, walls. Bust a move. Come on, bust a pose. Make me look like you're, you're strong. Strong walls. Come on. Come on, church. They need some encouragement here. All right. Come on. Strong walls. Nobody's moving them. Okay. They're solid. And the people inside Jericho, they are, they're like, they're happy. They're happy because they have strong walls all around them. Uh, I, need, I need to hear some happiness. Yay. We're safe. Yay. Come on, people of Jericho. Let's put some effort into this. You are feeling very safe and secure and happy. Let's see it. Okay. They're eating breakfast. The sun is coming up. It's rising. The people stand up and they get in line behind Joshua. And Caleb. Yes. Caleb was there. Now they march around. Let's do six times here. We're going we're gonna to count them off. Ready? Keep going. One. The walls are still laughing. Two. The people in Jericho are still happy. Happy Jericho people. Happy Jericho. Three. They're, the walls still look pretty firm. They look pretty strong. Four. Okay, I see some cracks in the foundation. Things are starting to shake a little bit. They're not looking as tough as they were. Five. And they're, oh, wow, I see some stuff. The people are a little bit scared now. Six. They're getting really scared. Why are they walking more than once? That's confusing. And they come around the seventh time, and all of a sudden, everybody shouts. The trumpet blows. And the walls fall down. Walls fall down. And then the people of Israel ran over the walls. Yeah. And the victory was God's. And everybody cheered. Woo. You want to say something? Israelites, we have defeated the. <laughs> we have f- defeated Jericho! Yeah! Awesome. All right, kids, you can go be seated. Awesome job. Let's give them a hand. Isn't that cool? Okay, boys, come, come out, grab a seat. Grab a seat. Because now we need to bring this all home. You got to bring home. That wall just fell down. And you know what? This is a real cool thing. The adults, you might not know this either. But this is what the text actually says happened. The walls fell flat. What does that mean? It means they didn't just crumble and fall down into big piles. It means the walls fell flat. So when the people of Israel went into the town, into the city of Jericho, they did not have to climb over the rubble. They did not have to climb over anything that would hold them back. Why? Because God removed every obstacle. Everything was gone. The walls fell flat. Now, I don't know what that looks like. I kind of imagine the ground opening up and the walls just falling into the ground. But that's just because I have a good imagination. I don't know what happened. But it was a miracle of miracles of miracles. And sometimes we have to realize in life 
that there are times where God wants to do something that you and I are not capable of doing. You get that? There are times when he wants to do things through us that we are not capable of doing. I have a question for you. Kids and adults, listen up. Think hard. Put on your thinking caps. Everybody put on the thinking cap. Put on your neighbor's thinking cap if they're too cool to put on their own. Yeah. If you could have a superpower, what would it be? And think not only what would it be, what would you use it for? Now, I'm going to give you some thinking music so you can think about it. Okay, everybody have an idea? We're going to start here. What would it be? Changing to animals. Changing into animals. And what would you do with that? Helping to build, like, stuff with the... With the powers. Okay, you'd build stuff with them. So like you'd use an elephant to make a cake. <laughs> okay, I get it. How about you? Flying. Flying. And what would you do with that? Not get a car. <laughs> you would fly. All right, good. How about you? I didn't think of one. She didn't think of one. I got none. You got none. You got one? Shape shifting. Shape shifting. And then what would you do with that? I would either turn into a dragon or turn into a wolf. But then you'd have to live outside. Okay. okay. Invisibility, because then I could steal everyone's candy. <laughs> so you can use it for good or evil. How about you? Uh, running so fast. A, a fast runner. Woo. Why? Because I want to rescue people. To rescue people. You know what? I already think you can run fast. I've seen it. How about you? Red that go. That's tongues. We need an interpretation. <laughs> okay. How about some of you adults out there? I'm going to pick on... How about you, Jade? I didn't. He wasn't listening. He wasn't paying attention. He was listening. <laughs> he was listening. What, what superpower would you want? And what would you do with it? To pray. I think I would like to, um, to make the world a better place. And the poor people, I would like to make them have a better life. Cool. How about you? What, what is yours? My superpower. Wait. My superpower is that we can help God. To make sure that the world is safe and a better place with lots of peace, peace with no fighting. And we, so that we can pray to God and have his worship. And cool. we have to fight the dawn and you need to. Because we have to fight that sin. Good. Good answer. Now, you know, we can... Oh, you got one, Zay Zay? Being super speedy. Super speedy. That is cool. How about you? Uh, every power. Every power. There you go. Oh, got some back here. Invisibility. Invisibility. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, teleportation, so I'm never late for things. <gasps> teleportation, so you're never late for things. Boy. <laughs> now, kids, we need your attention back here. You guys had some great suggestions. Dun, dun, dun. Hello. All right. And did you know, kids, this is for you kids to know and for you adults to understand that as a Christian, we are not limited to natural abilities. Now, what's an example of a natural ability? Walking. Walking. Breathing. Seeing. And these are all good things that we can do. Okay, eyes on me, eyes on me. Now, when the Bible talks about us being able to do supernatural things, what does that mean? Miracles are one thing. How many people can do a miracle right now by themselves? 
Nobody. But did you know that when we allow God to use us, he can do miracles through us? What would be a cool miracle? How about this? How about you guys tell me, I want everybody to think of something and shout it out at the same time, a miracle that happens in the Bible. Okay, ready? Everybody think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Then ready. One, two, three. Walking on water. I heard that one. The blind man seeing. Raising the dead. Lazarus healing. Babies are miracles too. How about you? Uh, babies again. Yeah, I agree with that one. That's good. That's good. You got one? Parting the Red Sea. You know what? The Bible is full of miracles. The Bible is full of examples of where God steps in and did something supernatural in a natural world. And guess what? God never stopped doing that. He still wants to do it. The difference is he wants to do it through you and me now. He wants to use us. Now, why does God give us these superpowers? Does he do it so people will think how impressed we are? But look, yeah, I know what you're going to (laughs) say. Good job. Do we do it so people will look at us and say, wow, that person can do that? Do we do it because it's really cool? Why do we do it? Why does God want us to do it through us? You got one? What's the answer? It's because it's it's because the it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do, right? We do it because God wants people to know that He loves them. That's the whole reason. The reason why God does miraculous things is because He wants people to know He loves them. That's the whole reason why. It's like, now I don't want any kids to get embarrassed here, but if you love somebody, how do you let them know? Maybe do you write a little note and put it in their desk? Or you put it on their locker, a little anonymous note? How many people have ever done that? How many people have ever received one of those? Nobody? Couple? Confetti. So there are ways. Yes, how about you? We run really fast on water. That's good. A gecko can. Yeah, and you again? What's up? The fire. The fire. Oh, I get that one. That's when fire came down out of heaven and rested on their heads. In the, yeah, that's a good one. He's working on his speed. Working on their speed. we got one minute, so we're going to wrap this up really tight. Okay. God wants to do things through you so that people know that he loves them. So, how many people are going to practice walking on water? See, in Canada, it's really easy to do in the wintertime. It's really easy. On moving water. Cool. So I want you kids to start thinking this way. Okay, listen to me. Listen to me. Everybody listen to me before I lose my voice and then I can't talk anymore and then it's all really sad. Five. I want ten. Ten. Two and a half. Three. All right. So kids, know this. God loves everybody. There's nobody on this earth God does not love. God loves the most miserable, per, miserable person. God loves the most angry person. God loves everybody equally. And it's our job to tell people that God loves them. I'll talk right now. You can talk later, okay? Okay? Good. It's our job to tell people. And one of the ways that he has given us is that we can do things and allow him to do things through us. So, this is your assignment for this week. Well, you're going to do this one. I want, and this goes for adults too. This goes for everybody. Everybody listening? Everybody listening? 
this is your assignment for this week. I want you to find one person somewhere in your school or in your building you live in or your home or somebody. I want you to find one person that you can share God's love with them this week. Now, how do you do that? Do you go up and give them a, slop, wet, a wet, sloppy kiss? Yeah. No, that's not how we do it. Some of the ways we can show love is by doing things for people. Okay? By helping them out. By doing things that they can't do on their own. For picking up somebody's books that fall down. But I want you to all find somebody you can show them love to this week. And before you do it, I want you to do something really special, and that's this. I want you to ask God how you can show love to them. And then when you pray and say, God, show me how I can show this person love, I want you to stop, and I want you to listen to what God says to you. Because every single one of you, adults and kids included, hear God's voice. How do I know that? Because Jesus said that. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. Now I want everybody to make a a sheep sound. Ready? One, two, three. All right. You are his sheep. So that means you hear his voice. So you ask God what question? What is the question you ask? (laughs) You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. So what's your assignment for this week? Find somebody who you can show love. How are you going to show them love? You're going to ask God, how do I show them love? And then you're going to listen to what he says. And then it's all going to be good, right? And if you really want to do it cool-like, you will use the miraculous to show them love. All right? We are going to bless the food. Now, just to give you some instructions, let me... You guys can talk amongst yourself for a second. That's okay. Keep talking. So the animals are downstairs. The animals are downstairs. Food will be up here. Food's coming up here. Okay. All right. Because the weather is not as nice as we were hoping it to be, the animals are going to be cold outside, so they're going to be inside. Okay. The animals will be in the basement, and because animals and food don't mix, because you might eat the wrong one. Um, that was a funny. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. The food is going to be in the foyer area. There's tables set up. You can get your burgers, all the good stuff there. We ask that you do not have food while you're petting the animals, okay? That can be very confusing for them because if you're eating food, they might want to eat you, right? What? There are, yes. Okay. So, everybody listening up. We're going to give instructions. With our listening ears. Not your non-listening ears. So, the workers downstairs, you can go down there. You can ask them politely if which animals you want to look at. We will have several camera people around so you can take pictures. We want to take lots of pictures. And... Then they listen to their instructions. Certain animals need to be held a certain way, uh, and certain things just we need to understand, right? Because nobody here is an expert except for who's, who's the experts? The people downstairs with the cool whatever they have on. Okay? So we ask them, they will give it, and we have till. Um, 1.30 for the animals. The food will be out throughout the day. Uh, OSV will be here at about 2 o'clock. So you guys are welcome to use the sanctuary until about 1, 1.30 in that range. And then we'll try to keep things downstairs or out there so they, they can set up and practice and rehearse. But we want to just thank you for coming today. It's going to be an awesome time with some cool animals. I want to see who has the, the guts to hold the snakes the tarantulas, the scorpions, the spiders. That is all down there. So talk amongst yourselves, and then I may release you. Maybe.
All right. We still need a few minutes for the food and the animals. So we are just going to pray and bless the food so that when it's ready, so you can form a line that way, the food will be ready out there, or you can go down that way and see the animals. Okay. We're going to pray. So that means everybody's going to be quiet. Let's pray. Kids, we're talking to God. That's important. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for each of the kids here. Lord, how special they are, how gifted they are, and how talented they are. Lord, we pray that you would just give us an awesome time with the animals. Thank you for creating all of them, Lord. You did such an amazing thing when you did that. Thank you for the food we're going to eat. Bless it to our body's use. And Lord, just help us all to enjoy our time together. And Lord, we bless your name. In Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.